Hello, and welcome to the talk about EVDF scheduler, uh, the new scheduler in the Linux kernel. Uh, I am Michal Koutny, I am from the core kernel team where mainly work on C groups, uh, but uh, so scheduler is not my primary interest, but because of uh, the fair scheduling and the group scheduling, I wanted to learn what EVDF is. Uh, so I stu studied what, where, what is the theoretical foundation for that, and I'd like to present it to you, but uh, beware, take it with a grain of salt, I am dilettant at this area. Um, so yeah, I will so start with some basic context of, of what we already have in the kernel with the history uh, and also what we have nowadays with the implementation. I will show some basic parts from the paper. I am referring to the paper, which is uh, the paper from oh, two guys. Uh, uh, they are in the references. I don't remember even the title of the paper. It's for the, but I refer it to as the paper from 1995. And also one uh, remark, I did no benchmarking. I expect that uh, this will, some benchmarking results will pop up uh, sooner or later in performance team or some maybe others will notice. So uh, from the user space perspective, uh, you may know uh, that there are available several scheduling policies uh, for each uh, thread. And uh, you can adjust them with uh, the set, set scheduler syscall. And uh, here is the overview of the existing policies that you can configure. Uh, and here they are sorted in some kind of way of the priorities. Uh, but don't confuse this with the actual priorities that are assigned within an individual policy. Uh, consider this like that the policy that is higher up the list pr can preempt uh, the policy that is lower in the list. So we have uh, the highest policy, which is the sched deadline for real-time uh, deadline scheduling. Then we have two uh, real-time policies, uh, sched FIFO and uh, sched RR, that stands for round robin. So these are real-time scheduling policies. Then we have sched other, which sounds like other, unimportant, but this is actually the default where the CFS uh, is implemented. Uh, there is a sked batch, which is very similar to sked other. And uh, sked idle, which is the lowest policy that, as the name suggests, uh, plans the tasks only when there is no other tasks to be run. Uh, and uh, so this is the like the user space uh, perspective. So the most important option is called sked other, but actually in the kernel the value is called sked normal, and that's uh, why the name of this talk is uh, EVDF is the new sked normal. Previously it was CFS, now it's the new normal. This and this joke I credit goes to Giovanni Kedovic who. Uh, figure it out. So well, uh, what is the CFS we have in the kernel? So uh, it is based on some ideal model of a parallel processor where all tasks or active tasks run in parallel and they each get proportional share of uh, the CPU time. So the, here the uh, some kind of virtual time, uh, is uh, divided uh, between the tasks uh, where n is the number of tasks, so each gets the fair, fair share. Um, but uh, in the CFS implementation, uh, we actually cannot run all tasks at once. Uh, we have to run one task a bit, one, one task for a while, then preempt and run another task. So their time, their time is not uh, incremented uh, uh, equally, uh, but uh, uh, according to what task is actually running. Uh, so, and when we call schedule to pick a task, uh, so that's where the scheduling policy uh, is, uh, is uh, active. Uh, so we pick uh, the task with the lowest accounting uh, uh, runtime. And uh, this model also uh, generalizes quite simply uh, to priorities. Uh, so here uh, I denote the priorities with uh, uh, w, so W is like the weight of a task. Uh, so if we have more important task, so its uh, uh, runtime is incremented in smaller amounts. That's why I divide it is with a double WI, and then the, the sum above is just the normalization in case the weight didn't sum to one. 
So uh, more important tasks uh, with higher weight uh, have slower uh, runtime progression, so they will be picked. Uh, uh, they would be picked uh, with higher priority or more often, uh, and they would get on average uh, the proportional time to the weight. So that's the CFS principle. Now, uh, what was the history of uh, this uh, scheduling uh, uh, of scheduling of this part of uh, in the kernel? So I, I I started with the history in 2003, uh, but there was also older history. So there was the so-called O1 scheduler that was named so uh, because there were multiple queues, and uh, uh, there was a list of queues and. Uh, uh, the tasks was selected from some of the queues that are actually uh, populated, and the, pop the qu query to figure out which uh, which, qu uh, which queue is populated was done via bitmap. So it was a constant time uh, query. So that's why it's got a one. But it has its issues uh, with uh, distinguishing uh, uh, latency sensitive and uh, batch tasks. So in 2007 was uh, this CFS. Uh, that I showed previously uh, was implemented. Uh, so it's uh, uh, rather old, I would say. Uh, then, as I said, uh, it can well implement uh, the weights. So soon after, in 2008, was implemented group scheduling, uh, which means uh, that a group of uh, the processes can act as a single process uh, in competition with other processes. Uh, in 2013 uh, was the SCAD deadline policy implemented, so I think it is the youngest one from them that were presented. Uh, and 2000, in 2022, uh, there was a proposal for SCAD X, which means uh, to have an extensible schedule, scheduling policy with some hooks that could be evaluated as BPF programs. But this is uh, still an RFC patch set uh, or patch set uh, not merged in the kernel. And at the end of the year 2023 uh, was uh, merged the implementation of EVDF. So it's in the current kernel, but uh, it's, there is still some work in progress. So that's why it's uh, unfinished here. Now, wh uh, why was this change made? I, I, my, my opinion why it was made. Uh, uh, that uh, the CFS scheduler has uh, multiple tunables uh, interestingly, originally they were sysctl tunables, uh, but after some time they were moved into debug FS file system uh, to mark them that they really are not tunables, but rather a debugging interface. Uh, there is the, uh, the the main the main tunable is a uh, main granularity, uh, which tells uh, what is the slice uh, that the task gets uh, when uh, what a CPU bound task. Uh, gets when it wants to run. Then there is a latency, uh, which should somehow configure uh, the window during which all tasks uh, run at least once. But uh, I admit I'm not sure whether it really guarantees that. Uh, and then another uh, tunable is uh, wake up granularity, uh, which tells us uh, how the preemption uh, the behavior of preemption when a task is uh, woken up, whether it should preempt the currently running task uh, or not. And it is another parameter of uh, the scheduler. So uh, here, the, this number of uh, tunables uh, may make the behavior of the scheduler complex, and uh, uh, it was not clear what actually is achieved uh, with individual tunables. So now EVDF. So uh, uh, there is the paper, and the <laughs> main theorem of the paper uh, uh, says this. I, here I took it in opposite uh, direction than usually when we have definition theorem proof. Uh, so I have theorem, and then I will explain the definitions and the, some consequences. The proof is in the paper. It's several pages. It's uh, too short time here to present it. Uh, so basically what it says that uh, uh, leg of a task at some certain moment uh, in time D uh, is bounded by these uh, boundaries that are related to the quantum of the scheduler. So uh, what is the quantum as the stuff? So when I will be talking about this, 
the, the EEF uh, model is that uh, there is like server and clients who request uh, time or they request resource. So they send the request for a, a R amount of the resource and the server then picks a client based on the policy uh, that will receive a quantum Q of the resource. So uh, when applied to the task scheduling, uh, the requests are generated uh, for each uh, task repeatedly as it needs to run. And the server is uh, the scheduler that picks the task to run. So now to the definitions uh, that explain the, 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 the behavior, or sorry, the definitions that explain the guarantees from the theorem. So uh, the, the most important uh, quantity uh, in EEF is so-called uh, so lag, which is uh, defined uh, for uh, yeah, uh, like uh, uh, for uh, certain task i at time t, and it uh, describes the difference between ideal service time and the actual service time. Uh, the ideal service time, the capital S. Uh, is uh, the amount of time that the task would have got uh, if it was scheduled according to the uh, fair sharing. While uh, the small, uh, small S service time is the amount of time that the task actually got, uh, that we can track. Uh, now, uh, here I have some formula that describes the ideal uh, ideal task, uh, sorry, sorry, the ideal, ideal service time. So uh, don't be scared uh, by the integral there. Uh, basically, uh, it is there because uh, it depends on the amount of tasks uh, that are active at each time because it uh, scales the sum of the weights. So it could be expressed also as uh, sum over uh, intervals uh, when the tasks uh, become active or inactive. Uh, so perhaps uh, to the takeaway from this is that if the lag is positive, uh, it means that the service is uh, lagging, uh, it is getting less time than it should have gotten. And uh, when it's uh, negative, it means that it got some extra time. Uh, steady system, that's also one of the assumptions of the, the theorem, that all the events occur uh, for tasks that have zero lag. So yeah, that I think it's quite a strong assumption, but we will see later what it means. Uh, yeah, here is just that if, if the, the, there is a constant set of the tasks, so then it rather simplifies just a lot of time. So, uh, yeah, so why, why would there be any difference at all, actually? Uh, it's similar to the previous uh, case with CFS, uh, because uh, the tasks don't run actually uh, truly in parallel. Sometimes uh, one task runs and another cannot run, and so that's the quantization. Uh, the, ser the server to the clients gives out the Q, Q, um, Q amount of the resource. So it depends on the size of the request of the clients, so either they can be uh, they can use the whole quantum, uh, they can use uh, only part of the quantum, that's also possible, and if uh, they need, uh, if they request greater amount than the quantum, so only the quantum is given out and, and the task is preempted and the uh, policy is uh, triggered again to pick a different or the same client depending on the competition. And uh, yeah, ideally, if the quantum was uh, zero, that would be the ideal model, so the lag would also be, would also be always zero. Uh, so another quantity that is uh, uh, introduced uh, in that paper uh, is uh, virtual time. Uh, we can see uh, that it is actually like the passage of time uh, normalized uh, by the set of, uh, of the tasks running at each moment. So uh, the previous formula that we had for the ideal service time for a task between two time, inter uh, between two time moments uh, can be uh, expressed uh, as a difference between the virtual times uh, uh, scaled by the weight of the task. 
so now, uh, what? Uh, yeah, perhaps I didn't even say uh, what EVDF stands for. Uh, so now uh, we can see that it stands for uh, earliest eligible virtual deadline first. That's the policy. So what does the eligible mean? So from the task, uh, we want to define an eligible time for the for a task. So uh, eligible time. So it's uh, derived from this equation, which basically tells us that at the time moment of t, uh, we, we we have the, the task has some served. Uh, it has the real. Uh, so it has the actual re time that it got in reality, that's the small s uh, uh, quantity, and we look at some time, uh, e, where it would equal to the ideal service time. So uh, from that, uh, so this is the first equation, uh, I mean here, uh, b before this equal sign. So if we solve it with, uh, with the definition of uh, the ideal service time, uh, we can calculate the eligible, uh, eligible time in uh, the virtual, uh, virtual space. Uh, uh, what is consequence of this uh, definition is uh, the other side of the equation that uh, I can rewrite the ideal service time between t0 and e as a sum of uh, uh, ideal service time between t, 0, and t, plus the leg at the time t. So basically, it means that uh, if the leg at the time t is uh, positive, so uh, if, 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 this, if this is positive, so that means that e uh, must be greater than t, or uh, Uh, eligible time is uh, eligible time is in the future, uh, but uh, I have to. Uh, this is the, not what I wanted to say uh, because I was, uh, okay, okay, uh, maybe I have wrong sign here, or, uh, yeah, I think there should be minus. Uh, yeah, so, uh, okay, uh, there should be minus, uh, because uh, what it says, when the leg is positive, uh, the eligible time should already be in the past, that, and that would make the task eligible. While when the leg is negative, that means that the service got an extra time, the eligible time is in the future. It would need to wait a bit. Uh, yeah, that must, and uh, <coughs> there must be minus. I think I didn't rewrite it correctly according to definition of the leg. So, uh, yeah, sorry. So this is the interpretation of the eligible time. It uh, tells us when it's, uh, when it's fair to run the task according to the uh, consumption it got. And the second, uh, second uh, important quantity is uh, the virtual deadline. And uh, that is uh, determined uh, from this equation when we already know uh, the eligible time. So we are looking for a deadline such that the service time, in the, the ideal service time, would equal the requested time of the task. Uh, so uh, this is again solved uh, as an equation for D, and we get the value of uh, the deadline in, uh, according with the, this, what we know previously and what the task requested. Uh, so we get the deadline for the task. The, yeah, this is everything, uh, maybe I should, yeah, this is for the task uh, I here, for single task. So for every task we calculate the eligible time and the deadline based on its request. Uh, so, 
we, we, we have this, yeah, and then we, when we calculate this for the tasks, uh, we can uh, realize the policy of uh, choosing the earliest eligible, uh, earliest eligible, no, uh, eligible earliest virtual deadline task. So that is the one that will be running when we do the scheduling decision. But there is an issue uh, when the tasks are uh, joining or leave, uh, leaving uh, the competition because we have to uh, adjust uh, the virtual time. So uh, this is uh, here, he, this is the adjustment. Uh, here, uh, it's like the T plus means it's the same time moment, uh, but uh, like uh, defined uh, as a limit from the right side. So there is like discontinuity, but if, when it's implemented, it's just the correction of the virtual time. So uh, the virtual time uh, has to be corrected uh, by the leg of the, of the task that is uh, joining or leaving. Uh, so here, I hope it's, I didn't mess the signs again, uh, but uh, when the task is leaving, the virtual time is uh, incremented. When it's joining, it's decremented. And this is serves uh, to ensure that this quantity, the sum of the legs at this time t plus, or actually at every time, is equal to zero. So uh, that's the property of the scheduling policy that the sum of the legs of all, all tasks is preserved as zero. Now, uh, in the paper, uh, it's then discussed uh, what happens when a task leaves uh, and then joins, and it has some lag. So uh, they discuss three options. Uh, the first one is that the lag, uh, the first option is <coughs> that the lag is preserved. Uh, that means uh, that it's uh, fair for the task because uh, when it got some extra time, later when it returns, it's accounted again as the extra time, or when it has the lag, uh, some, uh, yeah, when it's the lag, so again, when it joins, it is the lag. But there, this has an issue that is not fair, possibly, it's not possibly fair to the others because when the task leaves, and uh, then there can, be an, there can be different tasks running at the time when, when the task rejoins. So uh, this uh, uh, compensation for the rejoining tasks uh, would possibly apply to different tasks that originally caused uh, the lag. So it's, uh, I don't, can't say uh, it's uh, good or bad, it's just that. Uh, second option is uh, to uh, basically forget the lag of a task. Uh, this is fair on average over a long time because uh, if the task, sometimes it would uh, leave with positive lag, sometimes with negative lag, and if there, if there is, if this is like random and uh, there is independence between the events, so on average, uh, the lag would be zero. And joining and leaving with a zero lag is like the best thing we can have, ideally. And there's actually the third option uh, that they discuss in the paper, that the operations would be only allowed when the lag is exactly zero. So uh, it's uh, possible, uh, and the lag is negative, that means there was some extra time, so the operation can be like, delayed and formally executed later. Uh, but actually, I did not get this very well from the paper. That my understanding, when the lag is positive, so like the operation, during the operation we can delay others, uh, but because delaying everyone the same amount of time should be like, no operation, so I'm not sure whether they, this is the argument that they have in the paper, but they say uh, that uh, it's possible to postpone it like this, but uh, I'm not quite sure about this. Uh, th and this is, uh, this, this is uh, related to the implementations, uh, how they deal with this. So the implementations that we have, uh, I found, uh, or here's the list of the implementations, uh, so there is implementation uh, in the original paper uh, that was based on FreeBSD, then I found some other implementations, and the current implementation in the Linux kernel is from Peter Zastra from 2022. And how it looks like uh, on the outside. So it reduced the number of tunables, or at least for now, uh, uh, to just one, where we have the base slice, and uh, that's the quantum we saw in the paper, 
At the same time, there is a sketch runtime attribute per task uh, that is that the requests are from the paper. And but this part is only RFC patches. That's not in the kernel. But it should uh, be something else than the regular priorities that we know. Uh, it should be like the absolute amount of the time. So it is similar to the EDF, but in the, this domain of uh, fair scheduling. Uh, yeah, but actually uh, the implementation in the kernel. Uh, it didn't need to modify that much of the existing infrastructure uh, because the CFS already did uh, the tracking of the virtual time, so it only reordered the existing tree that was there to pick uh, the task according to the deadline. So that was not such a big change in, con in the concept. So what is the takeaway from this? Uh, so the policy is uh, explanation explained in the abbreviation. It's realized eligible virtual deadline first. Uh, the leg of any task is bounded under some assumptions. I'm not sure whether the Linux implementation holds these assumptions. Uh, there is simplification of the wake-up preemption decisions. And uh, despite it's merged partially now, it's still work in progress. Uh, yeah, these are the useful references uh, you may find. And yeah, that's all. Well, I actually have one. Um, you had there many equations which, uh, which were about a task, task I, but uh, the equations had I only on one side and not on the other. Does it mean that it uh, should work for any I? Uh, yes, or for example, uh, here, where there's the derivation of a, uh, yeah. So uh, he, uh, the, the the virtual time that's like the global entity. Uh, that's uh, a, an abstract time, uh, but uh, yeah, it works for any task. Uh, but you are right that here, I sh it would be better if I said ei and di because it's also derived for each task differently. And also the, the RI is also is the, the request size of each task. And the current implementation in the kernel uses the same request size. But as I said, the RFC patch allows configuring different uh, R for each task. Thank you. A good question. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, I just wanted to ask, like, uh, maybe I wasn't paying attention at the beginning, but in uh, which version of kernel this uh, is merged? Uh, it's in 6.6, .6, uh, the EVDF uh, first part, 6.6. .6. So it's not going to be in 3.15 SP6 or up? Uh, not from the base kernel, and I don't think it's not it's not backported. I, it, there are some performance guys, but I don't remember anyone requesting a backport. Okay, please. thank you. So I think there are no more questions. So I think we can wrap this up. So thank you.